let's examine the evidence of how Omnichannel has really delivered over the past 10 years. And I know in a retail business, you worry about you know, weekly sales, monthly numbers, if you're listed as about quarterly earnings. But if we take really the long-term horizon, forget quarterly annual results, let's just focus on a 10-year horizon. Over the past 10 years, from 2006 to 2016, all the retailers listed on this chart, and I'm not picking on them for any reason except that they're listed and their information is, is public, all of them have adopted an omnichannel strategy, without an exception. All of their CEOs, they go on the analyst call every quarter and they say, omnichannel is a priority. We're investing in omnichannel. We're making sure that our presence online is as good as our presence offline, and omnichannel is a priority. But over the past 10 years, almost every single major US retailer who adopted an omnichannel approach, I wouldn't say have failed, but they certainly have failed to deliver. This is the, the valuation of companies today versus their peak value in 2006. You look at great companies like Best Buy, JCPenney, Kohl's, et cetera. They've lost massive amounts of value. Some have lost 50%, some have lost 90%. The ones that performed relatively better, Target and Walmart, have hardly created any shareholder value at all. Target lost 15% of its market cap in 10 years, and Walmart barely grew market cap by 2%. 2% in 10 years. Remember, Walmart was one of the most valuable companies in the world 10, 10, 10 years ago. And obviously, in, in the meantime, and reinforcing that bias towards omnichannel, the value of Amazon has gone up by almost 2,000%. So if you're a pessimist, you'd say omnichannel has failed. If you are slightly optimistic and you are sort of looking at the data objectively, you would conclude that omnichannel has actually failed to deliver. Maybe it has helped some of the retailers survive for now, but certainly it hasn't helped any of them really flourish or deliver, deliver value. And then there are some interesting case studies out there. Waterstones. Waterstones is a UK high street uh, book retailer. And, and going back to the first category that Amazon disrupted, Waterstones just posted a very healthy profit. Of all retail categories, books, the battleground for Amazon when they first started, there is a high street retailer that is actually posting a profit. And rescued out of bankruptcy back in 2009, 2010, the owner did something very interesting. Uh, when he first acquired the company, he visited all of the stores, and in every store, he asked the store manager, have you read the top 10 books in your store? If the answer is yes, that person had a job. If the answer is no, that person was instantly fired. Have you read the top 10 books in your store? Not the top 10 books, Waterstones in the country, in your, in your store. Yes, no, you've got a job, you're, you're fired. He's changed completely the format of book selling, from selling books to providing a very different type of experience. We have coffee. If there is a launch of Harry Potter, you would clear the store for kids to come in and play Quidditch within, within the store. Store managers are empowered to choose what type of books to display in their windows, which have turned into fashion displays, as good as some of the department store windows in, in, in the UK. So Waterstones actually sells very little online. And in fact, they've discontinued Kindle in their stores as well. So you cannot pick up a Kindle in, in a Waterstone, but seems to be doing very well. Small, but has certainly come back from the brink and seems to be on a profitable growth path. And then to fashion category, the category that really, over the past 10 years, there has been a lot of debate whether e-commerce can really make inroads into fashion because of fit. You need to touch the fabric. You need to understand. And obviously, over, again, over the past 10 years, if we take the long-term horizon, there have been two big winners in fashion. Fast fashion, led by Inditex, of course, and off-price retailing, led by uh, TG Maxx or the TGX group of, of, of brands. Everyone else has suffered. The gap has lost market share. Many of the specialty retailers have lost significant market share. Some of them have gone, have gone bankrupt. But there is one retailer that stands out in the fashion category, which is one of the now the, the highest contested sort of category in terms of omnichannel experience. Primark stands out. While the gap has lost market share, Uniqlo has grown, TG Maxx, the fast fashion brands have grown, the fastest growing retailer in the fashion category is Primark. And I can tell you Primark does not sell a single item online. If you want to buy anything from Primark, you go to the store and you buy it from the store. 
They have invested zero dollars in e-commerce. They've invested zero dollars in omnichannel, and yet they are the number one or the fastest growing fashion retailer. And about to certainly in the UK, they're probably now the number one seller of clothing in, in, in the UK, far ahead of M&S and far ahead of, of Next. So that really begs the question for everyone. Are we asking ourselves the right question when we think about strategy? Is omni-channel really the right question? Is it really a, a question of channel? And I'll try to sort of make the argument today that obviously channel is important, but customers do not think in terms of channels. When we do an NPS or a customer survey, we don't ask customers, how was your channel? We ask customers, how was your experience? And in fact, customers value experience more than channel. Channel is a very technical term. When I talk to my 12-year-old uh, daughter, you know, and I tell her, you know, how was your experience at, at Virgin, you know, she has, you know, she can describe the experience. When I ask her, how was your omni-channel experience, okay, she has no, I, no clue what I'm, what, I'm talking, what I'm talking about. So omni-channel is an industry term. And maybe we're thinking because of what, how technology has touched all of our lives, because of how tech companies have taken over the stock market, because of what we read every day, we've become collectively as retailers, mall operators, obsessed by technology and obsessed by the question of omnichannel. Well, actually, maybe you need to go back to basics. Put on sort of the shoes or step into the shoes of the customers and try to think about what is the right experience from a customer perspective. 